Hello, my name is Kia Gorley, and I'm a doctoral student at Kansas State University studying applied swine nutrition. Today, I'll be discussing a research project where we evaluated different feeding strategies prior to farrowing and the impact on sow and litter performance, farrowing duration, and piglet survival. This project is part of the Improving Pig Survivability Project, a five-year multidisciplinary project aimed at reducing mortality in the United States swine industry. You can learn more about the Improving Pig Survivability Project at www.piglivability.org. Let's start with some statistics on pig survivability. The 2017 Pork Industry Productivity Analysis stated that stillborn and mummified fetuses accounted for 9.8% of totalborn pigs. In addition, the average pre-weaning mortality was 17.8%. Together, these two numbers mean that almost 28% of pigs that are born will not even make it to weaning. So how can we help with this problem? Last year, a study was published by Fayera and others to help understand if sows ran out of energy during longer farrowings, which could impact stillborn rate. This figure demonstrates that the time from last meal delivered until the onset of farrowing is a key factor in farrowing duration where sows that haven't consumed a meal within three hours from the start of farrowing have incrementally longer farrowing durations. Sows with longer farrowing durations oftentimes also have an increased stillborn rate. Therefore, the objective of our study was to determine if the timing of meals and the size of meals prior to farrowing had an impact on farrowing duration, sow performance, piglet survival, or litter performance we will focus on fairing duration and sow performance. We conducted this study at New Fashion Pork where we used approximately 750 sows in the summer of 2019. All treatments began once sows were moved into the farrowing house, which was around day 113 of gestation. The first treatment was the control. Sows were fed one meal of six pounds of lactation diet at 7 a.m. each day until farrowing. The second treatment was dividing that one six pound meal up into four equally sized meals of one and a half pounds each. These one and a half pound meals were then fed every six hours during the course of the day. This continued until the sow farrowed. The last treatment was considered the ad libitum treatment. Sows always had access to feed from entry into the farrowing house until they farrowed, but we also physically stood these sows up every six hours to encourage them to consume a meal. By using these three treatments, we hope to identify whether the frequency of meals, the size of meal, or a combination of increased feed allowance and frequency of meals would reduce stillborn rate, reduce farrowing duration, and improve piglet survival to weaning. We weighed and measured back fat on all sows at entry and exit of the farrowing house. Feed intake was recorded on all sows prior to farrowing as well as on a subset of 310 sows throughout the course of lactation, fairing duration and litter characteristics such as born alive, stillborn, and mummified fetuses were recorded. Sows were also followed after weaning to measure weaned estrus interval and subsequent reproductive performance. First, we will look at sow body weight change from farrow up until weaning. The treatments are shown along the horizontal axis, Remember, treatments are the control, with sows fed six pounds once a day, represented in the gray bar. Sows fed one and a half pounds four times a day, represented in the yellow bar. Or sows fed ad libitum and stood up every six hours, represented in the purple bar. As we take a look at sow body weight change from post farrow to weaning, what we observed was that sows that had consumed feed ad libitum prior to farrowing had a reduction in body weight loss from farrow to weaning. In addition, when we looked at back fat loss, it was reduced in sows again that had been fed ad libitum prior to farrowing compared to those that had been fed one and a half pounds every four hours. Here, the graph on the left shows sow average daily feed intake during lactation. Remember, this was recorded on a subset of 310 sows. Although not statistically different, there is a slight numerical increase in sow average daily feed intake in sows fed ad libitum prior to farrowing compared to control sows. 
The graph on the right is total feed intake. This is the sum from pre faro and during lactation on those 310 sows. This shows that sows fed ad libitum prior to farrowing consumed more feed than those fed one single daily meal prior to farrowing. On this slide, we focus on farrowing duration and its relation in time since the last delivery of meal prior to farrowing. The graph on the left shows how long in minutes since a sow last ate a meal in relation to when she began farrowing. As expected, sows fed once daily hadn't eaten in 10 hours compared to the other two treatments where on average sows had meat eaten a meal within three and a half hours of when they began to farrow. Farrowing duration is shown on the graph on the right. There was no change in farrowing duration regardless of treatment and on average farrowing lasted 208 minutes or three and a half hours. For each pick born, we noted whether it was assisted or not. Then we calculated the percentage of pigs per litter that were assisted. Interestingly, sows fed a small meal every six hours in the yellow bar had the lowest farrowing assistance, followed by the control sows in the gray bar, with those fed ad libitum prior to farrowing having the most pigs assisted. However, the right graph shows the stillborn rate, which was not different regardless of treatment and averaged around 6.5% across the herd. In summary, from our study, feeding frequency or amount of feed prior to farrowing did not impact the farrowing duration or stillborn rate. Farrowing assistance was reduced in sows that had been fed for 1.5 pound meals um, compared to those that had been fed ad libitum. Sows fed ad libitum prior to farrowing did lose less back fat and body weight compared to sows fed for one and a half pound meals. What does all of this mean? Sows are challenging to study due to the great amount of variation, but it does appear that ad libitum feed intake when sows are loaded into the farrowing house, again, around day 113 of gestation, does not have negative consequences on sow performance. With the level of sow productivity observed in this herd, it does not appear that farrowing duration, birth interval, or stillborn rate were impacted by these feeding strategies. As litter size continues to increase, however, nutritional or management strategies to help reduce farrowing duration and improve piglet survival to weaning should continue to be investigated. Thanks for watching. Please check the website for the Improving Pig Survivability Project at piglivability.org for more information about projects and resources aimed at reducing mortality in the U.S. swine industry.